Hi guys, welcome back and this week we're going to talk about how to organize the perfect fishing trip. Doesn't matter whether you're going to be at home or abroad, I'm going to go through some useful tips and tricks which I hope will culminate in the perfect fishing trip for you. So when you're thinking about planning the perfect fishing trip, one of the key elements is research. You shouldn't just jump into anything blind. So I think the first things you should think about are when you can go, what kind of fishing style you are interested in doing, and what particular species you would like to target. We know that the internet is an enormous wealth of information. There's so much information online right now. It's normally our first port of call, and you should definitely use that as part of your research. But please remember that what is on the internet is not necessarily gospel truth. It's one of those things which you can read one thing and you can think that you're going to get a particular experience and actually it transpires, it develops into something completely different. To avoid such cases as this, I would highly recommend that you speak to someone who has been there or has experienced it firsthand and that can actually talk you through reality. There's nothing quite like it straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Once you've figured out what species you want to target and where you're going to go, then you need to start investigating how you're going to get there. A little advice I'll give you here is that quite often spending a little bit more money can often make your whole journey that much more comfortable. For example, flights going through different hubs or whether you have to overnight, you may have saved yourself a little bit of money on the flight, but actually in reality you're going to spend a lot more because you've got to overnight and it can just make your life that little bit easier. At the end of the day, traveling is not quite as easy as it used to be. We all have to go through various points of security and actually trying to facilitate that and make that process as easy as possible is something that you should be planning and thinking about. When you are investigating different rivers, different operations, domestically or internationally, then one of the things I would definitely say is make sure you know exactly what is included and what is not included. There is nothing like turning up and finding that actually you're going to get hit with a bill at the end of the experience which you were not expecting, which can leave a very nasty taste in the mouth. So the next piece of advice I would give you is to use an agent. Oh, you would say that because you're an agent. Yes, I might say that, but there are very logical reasons for using an agent. There is a little bit of a stigma that perhaps you are not getting the same price as to whether you are booking it direct or whether you're booking through an agent. This should never be the case. Agents make their money off a commission and the commission is paid off exactly the same rate that you would pay direct. The only reason that that might be different is if you are not comparing like with like. Quite often an agent will realize that you will require two extra overnights, you'll need one on the front end and the back end, and they may well have included that in their quotation. You're going to have to buy it, so therefore they are using their knowledge to try and facilitate that for you. So just make sure that if you are looking at one price and comparing it with another, you are comparing like with like. You can speak to someone who has a huge depth of knowledge, you can tap into that for free, and they, because they have experienced a lot of this stuff, will have the ability to steer you and compare and contrast based off what they gauge from you as to what your specific needs are and to recommend the right river, the right operation, the right fishing experience, the right guide for you personally. That's something which is almost impossible to do off the internet. An agent is, is impartial. I mean, at the end of the day, their responsibility is for their client. Uh, their responsibility is not towards an operator. Uh, their responsibility is to look after their clients and hope that the service that they provide will have you coming back as a long-standing client. Therefore, you are going to get unbiased, impartial advice. At the end of the day, they are looking after you. It's important that you go to the right place for you, otherwise you're going to have a bad experience. It's just common sense. You get a chance to speak to someone who has first-hand experience of the destination you're looking at or the river you're looking at. They will be able to give you the pros and cons of each destination against each other and from that process you will have all of the information from which to make an informed decision. You can make sure that you are not being pushed into a shoulder week or you're putting put into a bad tidal week if it's salt and these are the things which are going to make a huge difference to your experience when you're on the ground. When it comes to currency, 
Quite often an agent will have the ability to buy forward on the currency and lock in a rate. They will be, have the ability to hold flights for you so that you don't actually have to pay for them all in one hit. And the currency exposure is a really important thing, especially taking in today's current markets moving up and down. You don't want to suddenly find that something that you have booked is suddenly going to cost you a lot more money six or eight months down the line. Most agents have got a personal relationship with the operators. So if they need to make a change to your booking or something like that, or something heaven forbid goes wrong, an agent will have the ability to pick up the phone and take care of it very, very quickly. And it's their problem. If you've booked a trip through them, they're the one who has to resolve it and they're the one who has to sort it out. Normally they can do this quick and speedily and with the minimum of fuss and hassle while you continue enjoying yourself. It's actually not when things are going right that an agent really comes into play, but it's actually when things begin to go wrong. International travel especially is one of those things where things just go wrong. Flights get canceled, hotels get bumped, and rather than you having to deal with that situation, you can make a call and your agent can sort it out for you they will be able to do it much quicker. When you're dealing with a booking such as this, you will also know exactly what you're paying for, what is included, what is not included, and you will be able to sort all of that out before you leave, making sure that actually when you're on your trip, you're actually just enjoying your trip and not having to worry about what's coming next. This takes a lot of the hassle and the strain away from organizing fishing around the world or domestically. So the next bit is what I call the six Ps. Proper planning and preparation prevents poor performance. Very useful acronym. When it comes to preparation, we're talking about kit, we're talking about making sure that you have everything that's necessary for your trip. Whoever you are booking through should be able to give you a detailed list of equipment, flies, certainly the other bits and pieces that, that you may need. You may need to know what the electrical sockets are, you need to know so you can charge your camera equipment, uh, your laptop. Uh, you need to know whether there's mobile reception, you need to know whether there's Wi-Fi. You need all of this information in advance. You don't want to be finding it out on the ground. Then we talk about toys, the fun bit. Tackle and equipment. These are obviously the most important things. You need to make sure that you are geared up correctly and that you have the right kit. One piece of advice I would give you on this front is don't scrimp on your tackle. The number of times that I have seen people turn up in destinations which are very, very expensive with old tatty tackle which is not fit for purpose. There is nothing more horrific than losing that fish of a lifetime through tackle failure which could be avoided. And most of these places are a very, very long way away from the nearest tackle shop. Off the back of that, make sure that you carry spares. Make sure that you've got spare lines, spare leaders, plenty of flies. Flies obviously is very important, make sure you've got stacks of flies and make sure they're the right flies. Make sure that you haven't made a huge investment in a whole load of flies that as soon as you turn up the guy looks and goes, no, 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 you better use one of these. Fly lines, backing, knot connections, all of that kind of things. Reels, make sure they've been maintained correctly, make sure they're oiled and lubricated, but especially fly lines, because as we well know, we don't always look after them as well as we should do. Make sure they're not cracked up. You don't want to see any coating coming through. That'll make the fly line sink when it probably shouldn't do. It can destroy your presentation. And more importantly, on big, big saltwater fish, the lines can snap. They can just snap and that's it. You've lost your fish, you've lost your fly line, and then you're in a world of hurt. Boots, waders, all that kind of thing. Make sure it's been well maintained. Make sure that you've got the right soles on your boots. Make sure that you are equipped to go to where you are going. A lot of this is pretty harsh environment. Uh, saltwater environments can be particularly harsh. Also, you know, if you're wading up in Iceland or Northern Russia or something like that, make sure that you've got waders which are gonna keep you dry and warm. The last thing you want to be doing is getting wet and cold because that can really ruin a fishing trip remarkably quickly. Appropriate clothing. One of the things I will say is that technical clothing has come an extremely long way over the last 10 years and it is worth its weight in gold. It really does make a huge difference. For example, layering. If you are going to be in British Columbia or you're going to be in Scotland or you're going to be up in the borders or something like that, Layering is really, really important. You've got a decent base layer, mid layer and outer layer. That means that if the weather changes rapidly, you can also change with the weather. Uh, as I always say, there's, there's no bad weather, there's just bad equipment and bad kit. Having a detailed kit list and knowing what you can take will also allow you to pack frugally. Make sure that you don't overpack. There's nothing worse than you see people turning up 
and they've got bags and bags of kit, half of which will remain in the bag through most of their fishing trip. And if they packed concisely, then life would have been considerably easier, certainly on their backs while they're going through the airport. But also, a lot of these places that we end up going to and these far-flung destinations, they've got strict luggage requirements and they will not allow you to take extra kit. So the last thing you want to be doing is sweating at a charter flight and trying to pull out different weights of kit to get down to the luggage limit, thinking, God, what am I going to leave behind? Is it still going to be there when I get back? So pack concisely. And that shouldn't be too difficult if you're fully prepared and know what you need to take. I think my last big piece of advice is make sure that you take the time to actually relax and enjoy where you are. At the end of the day, you're going fishing for a reason. It is one of those very few hobbies that you can be completely focused on and it can take you away from reality because you're totally focused on what that fish is doing and whether it's going to eat that fly and whether the presentation was correct. And in that way, it's remarkably relaxing. But some people get very, very tense and very het up about what's going to happen. Just relax. You've got to take a deep breath and you sometimes can become so focused on the fishing, that you forget the surroundings that you're in. Some of these places are some of the most stunning spots in the world. Make sure that you enjoy it. Trust your guide. Your guide at the end of the day is there to enhance your experience. Use their local knowledge use their wisdom, use their experience. The guide is there for you to catch fish. They're there to help you. So if they're offering advice, it is normally for your benefit. It's really important to be courteous. If you, if you turned up somewhere and someone was remarkably rude to you, I don't think that you would probably take the time that you would do if they were being polite and nice. So always be courteous to your guide. It's there knowledge that you are tapping into and they were the ones who are going to enhance your experience. Having said that, if you are upset about something or you are not happy with the way things are going, don't wait to voice your concerns. You don't have to do it loudly in front of everybody else. What you can actually do is quietly suggest something to either your guide or maybe even chat to the manager of the operation and just ask them politely whether that is the right way that things were supposed to be done. You may find that he reacts very differently and he'll switch out your guide or something like that. Hopefully that's not the situation, but don't wait until you get home. Don't have your trip spoiled by the fact that you didn't actually say something. Take pictures. It's really important that you create these memories and when the trip is over, those are the memories that stand. And great photographs can really take you back and let you relive that experience again and again and again and push you through the dark months of winter when potentially you're not fishing and then you can live vicariously through them. At the end of your trip, at the end of your week, uh, I always try and clean my kit before I head home because invariably what happens is it gets thrown into a cupboard as soon as I arrive, um, you know, you get immediately absorbed in everyday life again and back into the, uh, the daily grind of your daily routine so just make sure that you have cleaned off stuff, put it all away. Uh, here is a link to a quick video about maintaining your kit, which I hope you find useful. But having that stuff done before you depart and then do it again when you get home and make sure that it's all put away and neat and tidy. Yes, okay, so I might be slightly OCD, but at the end of the day, when it comes to me heading off again, I know exactly where everything is and I know that it's in its proper place and I know that I don't have to run around the house in a bit of a muck sweat trying to find all the bits that I need to prepare for my next trip. A trip can be an awful lot of fun, whether you're catching a lot of fish or not. So just keep that one in mind. At the end of the day, fish are wild creatures. We don't have power over them. The weather may not play ball, but there is no point in getting massively uptight and stressed about it, because actually all that's gonna do is ruin your experience and ruin the experience for those around you. Well, again, I hope that uh, you found those little tips and tricks useful. Um, I hope that uh, they will explain the best way to organize yourself a fantastic fishing trip. And I hope to see plenty of you out on the water in the future. Thank you very much again for watching and please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.